But when I was in the freshman year of my college, I was having a conversation with my professor and director of the university about my career and line of study in the future. He asked me what my goal was. Fresh with all the concepts that I had mastered, I told him, I want to use nanotechnology in smart sensors, in cancer therapy, and for environment protection. He asked me again, what is your goal in life? I elaborated with something a bit broader. I told him, I want to use electrospun nanofibers in cancer therapy, micro-encapsulation of nanoparticles, and smart sensors to protect the environment. I could see that he was still not convinced. He then said, you told me what you want and how you want it. But tell me why you want it. And by why, I mean, what is your purpose? What is your belief? Why do you want to get out of bed every morning? And why should anyone care? I then went from the fuzziest thought to the clearest thought and began to communicate from inside out. I told him I want to enrich the health and well-being of the planet and everyone who lives here. And from that moment on, I had a purpose that was my guiding force. I participated in the Global Trio Hackathon, each at MIT, Stanford, and Harvard. But while I was researching in the field of nanotechnology, I often encountered questions like, oh, so is that what they use in Marvel to build the Spider-Man suit? That's so cool. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. But I would be so excited if I could build that. So what exactly is nano? Nano is one billionth of a meter, which is one lakh times smaller than the width of a human hair. Let me explain this to you with an example many of you can relate to. How many of you all have heard the song, Him for the Weekend by Coldplay? Yeah, it has 315 words in the song. Now, if we add up all the songs in all the albums of Coldplay till now, that is 175 songs, we get a total of 60,000 words. But if we add up all the words in the 100 million songs available on Spotify, just three words out of all of those words gives a diameter of one nanofiber, that is 0 0.1 nanometer. That means nano is insanely small. In today's age of health and wellness, everyone is attracted to immunity-boosting foods. That's how we find our probiotic milk, probiotic Greek yogurts, and ready-to-eat cereals on the top of our kitchen shelves. But how do we know that this probiotic bacteria that we are actually paying a premium for do survive in our intestinal tract to deliver the target and have a beneficial effect in our body? It's made possible with nanotechnology. With the microencapsulation of this probiotic bacteria, which means a protective covering of the probiotic bacteria with the help of nanoparticle, it helps them survive in our intestinal tract. I elaborated this in my paper published in the special issue of Food Frontiers Wiley called Advancements of Nanotechnology in Food Science and Industry. Nanotechnology also has tremendous scope in the field of medicine. One such example is the use of nanofibers in cancer therapy. Cancer is the fifth leading cause of deaths in India, resulting in over 6 lakh deaths every year. Now imagine this. You have a 100 candles laid out in front of you, which you have to blow into. But you have to make sure that only one candle in red blows out, while all the 99 other stay lit. Now imagine this in a complex human body. That essentially is the concept of nanofibers. 
chemotherapy. It is a very effective treatment for cancer cells, where there are powerful chemicals released in the body that attack the can cancer cells. But in the process, they also end up harming the normal cells in your body, thus resulting in many side effects. But what nanofibers does is that it only targets the cancer cells in your body, not harming the normal cells, and thus preventing the reoccurrence of cancer. I elaborated this in my paper called Electrospun Nanofibers in Cancer Therapy. Now, let's talk about one thing that we find everywhere around us. This, my favorite snack, is an energy bar. It's going to take me less than a minute to finish an energy bar. Now you all must be wondering what the relevance of this information is besides making you hungry. I'm getting there. Stay with me. While I finish an energy bar in less than a minute, the contents are gone, but the wrapping still persists. Most of us choose to either recycle it or throw it in the garbage. But we do the latter. Now this wrapping will find itself in a landfill where it will take 250 years to fully decompose. Which brings me back to my initial point. Plastic. More and more plastic. It is everywhere around us. It is in our homes, in our offices, even in our favorite cafes offering tonic water in plastic bottles. It's not hard to understand why. Plastic is cheap, and that's why we make a lot of it. India generates 3.5 million tons of plastic waste every year. That is seven times the twin towers that we demolished in Noida. So I worked on nanomaterials, which is an effective alternative to this plastic. Cellulose. It is the most abundantly occurring natural polymer on Earth and nanocellulose is the fiber extracted from it. Nanocellulose is eco-friendly and sustainable too, and thus I explored this in my internationally available book chapter called Applications of Nanocellulose in Supercapacitors. Now what is the next most important resource for military and army besides their ammunition? It is safe drinking water. Due to their strenuous activity in harsh environments, it is important for them to stay sufficiently hydrated. Thus, in my fully funded research fellowship at the University of Waterloo in Canada, I built a novel device that can help detect pesticides in water. The device currently in use requires massive labor resources, which is not available to the general population. The shortcomings of the device I modified was that different strips was required for different concentrations of the pesticide, thus requiring the test to be conducted for a larger number of times. Also, the results vary due to change in pressure, time, and environment. So I thought through this, and I involved three detection spots on one device, thus reducing the number of times the test had to be carried out. With the help of a color gradient on my device, one could accurately determine the concentration of the pesticide. That took just under two minutes. Now, nanotechnology may seem like something into the future, but we all might be using nanotechnology right now. How many of you all play tennis? The tennis balls that you'll use actually have nanotechnology to help them stay in good condition and last longer. Or the sunscreens that we use actually have a layer of nanotechnology pro to protect us from the UV rays or we might actually be wearing nanotechnology trousers that have nanofibers which prevent the dirt from penetrating deeper into the layers of clothing. But it's a result of years of research. 
the marvels of nanotechnology will still be explored in the decades to come. We are still in the first or second generation of nanomaterials, and we're expecting a third and fourth generation that involves nanorobotics. But for that, we have to invest in it today. So, are we thinking nano enough today to enrich people's lives for a better tomorrow? I'm gonna leave you with that thought. Thank you. <laughs>